Hello students, welcome back to Make a Mind Mentor. I am Honey. In this video, we are going to do remaining questions of exercise 1A that is from question number 6 to question number 16 of chapter 1 integers. I have already made a video on the first 5 questions of this exercise and also I have explained about different properties of addition and subtraction of integers. So you can find its link in the description box and also in the i button. Do check it out. Now coming to question number 6, it says subtract minus 134 from the sum of 38 and 87. So first of all, we are going to calculate the sum of these two integers. So sum is equal to 38 plus minus 87. In the previous video, we have seen that whenever two signs are together, we have to merge them. So on opening the bracket, you get here one single sign in place of these two signs plus and minus becomes minus and you have 87 here. Now 38 is a positive integer, 87 has a minus sign with it. So plus and minus gives us minus. Now this minus means that we have to do subtraction operation. It means from 87 take away 38. So let us do that quickly. This becomes 7, this becomes 17. You can write a 9 here and 4. So you get here 49. Now among 38 and 87, 87 is greater and 87 is along with minus sign. So our answer will have that minus sign in it. Now let us read the question again. Subtract minus 134 from the sum of these two. Now in place of this whole text, we have minus 49 because now we have the sum. Now let us read the question. Subtract minus 134 from minus 49. So this looks simple. We are going to calculate the difference now. So difference is equal to minus 49 minus minus 134. As the question says, subtract minus 134 from minus 49 and this sign is for the subtraction operation that we are doing. Now let us open the brackets here. It means we can see here the two signs are together. So we have to merge them. So minus 49 minus and minus becomes plus 134. Now you see one of the numbers is positive. The other one is negative. So in this case plus minus is minus and we are going to do subtraction operation. So from 134 from the larger number we will take away the smaller number. This 4 becomes 14, this becomes 2, this will become a 0 and now this becomes 12. So 14 minus 9 is 5, 12 minus 4 is 8 and 0 comes as it is. So you have 85 here and among 49 and 134, 134 is bigger and it is a positive number or it has a plus sign with it. It means our answer will also be a positive integer. Now in question number 7 we have to fill in the blanks and most of these questions are related to the properties of addition that we have learned in the previous video. Now looking at the first question you can see here that there are three integers minus 13, 27 and minus 41 and all of these three are added. Now in the LHS if you see minus 13 and 27 are added first because there is a bracket along with it and then its result will be added to minus 47. Now this should be equal to minus 13 plus and we are adding first 27 and what should be in this blank? The remaining number. So what is that remaining number? It is minus 41. So in the RHS these two will be added first and its result will be added to minus 13. Now this is one of the properties which is called as associative law. An associative law is followed only by addition operation. So you can just write that it follows associative law and our answer is going to be minus 41. The missing number is minus 41. Now coming to question number 2 you can see you have 3 integers here and they are added. Now in the LHS if you see these two are added first and in the RHS if you see the first two are added first and we know that by associative law the answers are going to come equal for both the cases. 
Now what is going to come in this blank? The missing number. So you can just check minus 26 is here. You have minus 26. Minus 49 is here. Minus 49 is here. But what is missing? The missing number is minus 83. And again the second question follows associative law. Next is question number 3. 53 plus minus 37 will be equal to minus 37 plus and the missing number is 53 and the property of addition that is being followed here is commutative law of addition right so it is commutative law coming to question number 4 minus 68 plus minus 76 will be equal to you have minus 68 here but the order is changed 76 is now the first number. So what was missing? The missing number was minus 76. And again it is commutative law of addition. Coming to question number 5. It is minus 72 plus some number and it will be equal to the number itself. So minus 72 was not affected with whatsoever it was added and you got your answer as minus 72 and it is only possible when this blank has zero in it and it is one of the properties called as existence of additive identity where you add a number with zero and there is no change in the result as you're going to get the answer as the number itself question number six is minus in bracket minus 83 so we know that whenever two signs are together, we have to make them one sign. And we all know that minus and minus make plus. So you are going to get your answer as just 53. It is a positive integer. Now coming to the next question. Minus 60 minus some number and it should be equal to minus 59. So here in the blank, you are going to have your answer as minus 1. And let us see how are we getting minus 1 there. Minus 60 minus minus 1. And let us solve it now. Minus 60 minus minus become plus 1. And now minus and plus become minus. So we are going to do subtraction operation. So we know 60 minus 1 gives us 59. And the greater number sign is minus. So it is going to be minus 59. Right. So in the blank we are going to have minus one likewise for question number eight minus 31 plus some number and it should be equal to minus 40 so here we are going to write minus 9 and now let us have a check for question number eight so minus 31 plus minus 9 is equal to minus 31 these two signs are going to merge together and become minus sign because plus minus is minus Minus and minus is plus. Minus and minus becomes plus. So we are going to add these two. Second step is for the operation. It means you have to perform either addition or subtraction as told in the previous video. So 31 is added to 9 and you get here 40. So we write here 40 and among 31 and 9, 31 is greater and 31 has minus sign with it. And the same sign is carried in the answer. So we get here minus 40 which is equal to the value that we want in question number 8. Now let us simplify question number 8. Minus 13 minus minus 27 is added. Plus in bracket minus 25 minus minus 40. And there is a closing curly bracket. Now, whenever you see different parentheses, it means you, you see small brackets, then you see curly brackets and also when you see square bracket, you have to give the highest priority on solving the part of the question which has these small brackets in it. So, we are going to solve the small brackets first. Now, minus 13 remains as it is. We are going to solve this small bracket. So, let us open it. So minus and minus merge together and become plus and you have plus 27. It is added to minus 25 minus and minus again these two signs are together. We have to merge them. So on merging you get here plus 40. Now we have solved the small brackets. Now it's time to do the curly brackets. So in the curly brackets we are going to solve this separately and 
this separately. So minus plus is minus. It means I have to subtract 13 from 27. Let us do that. You get here 14. So 14 comes here and among 13 and 27, 27 is bigger number. And since it is positive, our answer will also be positive. Plus, let us solve now the second curly brackets. So minus plus is minus. It means from 40, we have to subtract 25. And on doing that, you are going to get 15 as the answer. So 15 comes here. Now among 25 and 40, 40 is bigger and 40 is with plus sign. So our answer will also be a positive number, just 15. Now add 14 and 15 because it looks very simple to add 14 and 15. So on adding this, we get 29. So 29 is a simplified form of this expression. Now let us do question number 9. Question number 9 is, Find 36 minus minus 64 and minus 64 minus 36. So we are going to find these two values and we have to check whether they are equal or not. Now here we are actually proving one of the properties that we have learned. So let us first to solve these questions, check whether they are equal or not. And then I will tell you that which property is actually verified here. 36 minus minus 64. So this is the one expression that we are going to solve now. So 36 minus and minus becomes plus. You get here 64. And on adding 36 and 64, you are going to get here 100. Likewise, I'll write minus 64 minus 36. Now let us solve this. So minus and minus becomes plus. It means I have to add 64 and 36. And we know on adding, we are going to get 100. So I will write 100 here. But what about the sign? We have to check the sign as well. So among 64 and 36, 64 is greater than 36. And we have to check that what is the sign along with 64. So it is minus sign. Now minus sign will come to the answer as well. Now observe these two answers carefully and you will see that there is a huge difference between these two answers. One is a positive 100, the other one is a negative 100 and it means that they are not equal. So you can write here that they are not equal because one is positive and the other one is negative. And we have just verified that subtraction doesn't follow commutative law. It means if you change the order of integers while subtracting them, the answer will not be equal. So this is what the commutative law says. Now coming to question number 10. In question number 10, values of A, B, C are given. And by using these values, we have to verify this. Okay, now if you see here, A plus B are added first and then the result is added to C. And in the second case, B and C are added first and then the result is added to A. And this is associative law of addition. Now let us solve this question. So we are going to write that it is given that A is equal to minus 8, B is equal to minus 7 and C is equal to 6. Now let us take the left hand side and put the values of A, B and C in it. Take the LHS and in LHS we have minus 8 is added to minus 7. So instead of a small bracket, I'll write here the curly brackets and is added to 6. Take the RHS and in the RHS you have minus 8 plus what is the value of B? Minus 7 and it is added to 6. Now let us solve the small bracket first. So curly brackets minus 8 plus minus will merge together and become minus sign. So you have minus 7 plus 6. Now solve the curly bracket minus and minus becomes plus. So you have to add 8 plus 7 is 15 and 8 is a bigger number and its sign is negative. So it is minus 15 plus 6. Now again minus and plus is minus. It means 
subtraction operation we have to do so from 15 take away 6 so you are going to get here a 9 so 9 is here greater number is 15 its sign is negative same thing we are going to do with the RHS but here we are going to solve the last two numbers first so minus 8 plus in bracket you have minus 7 plus 6 now minus 8 plus minus plus is minus 7 minus 6 is 1 so you get here a 1 and now greater number is 7 its sign is minus so I will write minus 1 now minus 8 plus minus becomes minus and you get here a 1 and minus minus is plus so 8 plus 1 gives us 9 so among these two greater number is 8 and it has a minus sign with it so you are going to write minus 9 now if you check both LHS and RHS have the same value which is equal to minus 9 and we have just verified the associative law of addition so you can write here as LHS is equal to RHS which is equal to minus 9 and you have just verified it so hence verified that's it likewise question number 11 you are given the values of a and b and you have to show that a minus b is not equal to b minus a so this is actually the statement that subtraction doesn't follow commutative law okay so let us take the lhs you can write here first given value of a is minus 9 b is minus 6 and we are going to take lhs first lhs is what a minus b it means minus 9 minus minus 6 so you are going to get minus 9 minus minus becomes plus 6 minus plus is minus so 9 minus 6 is 3 so you write a 3 here and greater number is 9 it has a minus sign with it so minus sign will come here likewise take the rhs in rhs b minus a we have to do so b minus a is minus 6 minus minus 9 so minus 6 both of these two signs are going to merge together so minus minus becomes plus 9 minus plus is minus so 9 minus 6 is 3 so you get a 3 here among these two 9 is bigger than 6 so 9 is a positive number you can see here it has a plus sign with it so our answer will also be a positive integer now if you compare both of these answers you will see that the left hand side gives us the value minus 3 and the right hand side gives us the value plus 3 so these two are actually opposite numbers there is a big difference between these two numbers so we can actually write that as LHS is not equal to RHS. Okay. Therefore, we can clearly say that A minus B is not equal to B minus A. And we have also verified that the subtraction doesn't follow commutative law. Now, coming to question number 12, you have the sum of two integers is minus 16. One of them is given to you. You need to find the other so let us write first of all all the things that are given to us so we have the sum of two integers which is minus 16 we have one of the integers and it is equal to 53 and let us say that the other integer is x now let me just explain you this question so this question says that you have two integers and on adding these two integers you get minus 16 among these two one of the integers is given to you which is 53 you have to calculate the other integer now let me simplify this question by taking a small example so let us say if we have a question that there are two numbers when they are added together and you get 5 okay and i say that one of the numbers is 3 
and you have to find the other number. So this other number is obviously going to be 2, right? Because 3 plus 2 is number 5. So what we actually did, we have subtracted 3 from 5. And on subtracting 3 from 5, we got our answer as 2. Same thing we are going to do here itself. To find this number, we are going to subtract 53 from this number. So now what we will do is to get that other number, we are going to subtract 53 from the sum. So minus 16 and from this we have to take away 53. Right? And let us see what we get. Minus and minus is plus. So plus means 53 plus 16. You get here 69. So you write here 69. And among these two, 53 is greater and its sign is negative. So we are going to put that sign here. So finally, you got the value of the other integers. You can write that thus other integer is minus 69. That's it. Now let us do question number 13, which is just like question number 12. The sum of two integers is given to you. So you have the sum of two integers as 65. One of the integers is given to you. So one of the integers is minus 31. You have to find the other. So let me call that other integer as x. So the other integer is, let us say x. So again, let us understand the meaning of this question. There are two integers. And when these two integers are added, you get here 65. One of the integers is minus 31. And we have to calculate the other integer. Again, let me simplify this. So let us take a simple example to understand this question. Let us say that on adding two numbers, your answer should come 3. And one of the numbers is given to you as 2. You have to calculate this number. So it is very clear that 2 plus 1 will give us 3. So the value of x or what should come in place of x, it is 1. But how did we actually got this value? It is quite simple. From the sum, I have subtracted one of the numbers. So you have subtracted 2 from 3 and you got your answer as 1. Same logic we are going to use for this question. So now to get the value of x, you have to first write the sum and from this sum take away minus 31. Now 65 minus and minus will become plus 31. And how much is 65 plus 31? It will be 96. So thus the other integer that we were looking for is 96. So thus the other integer is 96. Now let us do question number 14. Question number 14 is the difference of an integer a and minus 6 is 4. So what is actually said? The difference between a and minus 6. So when these two are subtracted, okay? Then you get your answer as 4. So you have to find the value of this a. Now let me take a simple example to explain this question. If you have something like find a number from which if you take away 2, you get here 5. And we all know that 7 minus 2 will give us 5. So from where did this 7 come? So this 7 actually comes from when you add these two numbers, it means when I add 5 and 2, I get number 7. We are going to follow the same logic for this question. We are actually going to add these two numbers. So 4 and minus 6 are actually to be added so that we get the value of A here. So let us write what is given to us. So you have the difference as 4. And now we have to calculate the value of a. a minus minus 6 is equal to 4. This minus sign is for the subtraction that we are doing. And this minus 6 is actually in the question. Okay, so that is why you can see two minus signs here. 
Now we have already understood the logic of getting the value of a. So we are going to jump into that same thing. Now to calculate the value of a, we know that we have to add the difference and the given integer. So write the difference and add it with the integer that you have. So a is equal to 4 plus minus is minus 6. Keep on solving to get the value of a. So a will be equal to this is positive 4. So plus minus is minus 6 minus 4 is 2. So you can write here 2 and among these two 6 is bigger. So we are going to put the sign of 6 with our answer. So 6 is negative. It means our answer will also be negative. Thus, value of a is minus. So students always remember that whenever you see such kind of questions, you better take some small examples for yourself, understand the logic behind it and then apply the same logic to your question as we have done in question number 12, 13 and 14. Now question number 15 says write the pair of integers whose sum gives 0. So this is actually the case of additive inverse. So where you take two numbers, you add them and you expect that your sum should come 0. And we know that in additive inverse, if I take number 6 as one of the numbers, I have to add it with its opposite. So I have to add it with minus 6 so that my answer comes 0. Likewise, you can take any number, any integer and just add it with its opposite. I will take one more example. I can write minus 10 and I should add minus 10 with its opposite that is plus 10 to get the answer as 0. So these two are the answers. You can have, you can write your answer as 6 and minus 6 or you can write your answer as minus 10 or 10. Now the second question is write a pair of integers whose sum is a negative number. In that case, let us say that I am adding 10 with 2. Okay. Now if I want my answer to be negative, I have to put a minus sign with a larger number. That's it. So minus 10 plus 2 will give me minus 8. Next question, write a pair of integer whose sum gives an integer smaller than both the integers. In this case, you can think of the numbers where both the numbers are negative because when two negative numbers are added, their sum is smaller than them. For example, if I say minus 1 is added to minus 2, you are going to get your answer as minus 3. And we know that minus 3 is smaller than minus 1 and minus 2. And we know that if negative numbers are away from 0, they actually become smaller. So minus 3 is smaller here. Minus 1 and minus 2 are greater as compared to minus 3. Now coming to question number 4. You need to find the pair of integers whose sum gives an integer greater than both the integers. So for this, take both integers as positive integers. Take 10, add it with 5, you are going to get 15. So yes, you are getting an integer that is greater than both the integers. So 15 is greater than 10 and 5 both. So in the fourth case, you are going to take both the numbers as positive integers. Next is find the pair of integers whose sum gives an integer smaller than only one of the integers. In this case, you can take, for example, take minus 5 and add it with, let us say, 1. So you are going to get here minus. 4. Now coming to question number 16. Here we have to state whether the statements are true or false. So let us quickly do them. So 0 is the smallest integer. So this statement is completely false. So as on the number line, if 0 is suppose here, on the left hand side you have all the negative numbers. So minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. So there are integers that are smaller than 0. So for example, minus 1 is smaller than 0. Minus 2 is smaller than 0. Minus 3 is also smaller than 0. Now coming to the second question, minus 10 is greater than minus 7. So let me explain you with the help of the number line again. So 0 comes here. Minus 1, minus 2. Likewise, you will get minus 7, minus 8. 
minus 9 and you have minus 10. Now we all know that as the distance between an integer and 0 increases in the left hand side that integer becomes smaller. So if you see the distance between minus 10 and 0 and compare it with the distance that is in between minus 7 and 0. So minus 7 is closer to 0 and minus 10 is actually far from 0. So if it is closer to 0, if any integer, if any negative integer is closer to 0, it is bigger than the other integer which is far away from 0. So in this case, minus 10 is actually smaller than minus 7. So but the statement is that minus 10 is greater than minus 7 which is completely false. Now let us read the third question. 0 is larger than every negative integer. So this is true. The sum of two negative integers is a negative integer. So we can check that right away. Take any two negative integer minus 1 plus minus 2. Solve it. Minus 1 plus minus is minus 2. Minus and minus, it means we have to do addition because minus and minus becomes plus. So add 2 plus 1 is 3, greater number sign is minus. So yes, on adding two negative integers, you get your answer as a negative integer. So it is completely true. Let us read the last question where you have to find the sum of a negative and a positive integer and they are saying that their sum is always positive. So this word is important always means each time you are adding a negative and a positive number you are going to get a positive integer as your answer. So this doesn't happen every time that you get a positive number. In some cases you might get a positive number in some cases you might not get a positive number. So question number five is false. So let me explain you this with the help of two different examples. Let us take one negative number minus 10 and I will add it with a positive integer let us say 2. In this case I am going to get my answer as minus 8. Secondly take minus 10 and add it with 20. So minus plus is minus 20 minus 10 is, is 10 and greater number is 20 so your answer will also be positive. See one of the integers was negative and one was the positive here. In both the cases we have got once we got our answer as negative and in the second case we got our answer as positive integer. So it is not all the time that whenever a negative and a positive number are added you are going to get a positive number. Now let us quickly do mega mind wrap up that what we have learned so far in this video. So we have seen that subtraction only follows closure property. It doesn't follow commutative or associative law. And secondly, we have verified associative law for integers in different questions. Hope this video was helpful. See you in the next video where I will be doing the next exercises. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also hit the like button and comment down. Thank you so much for watching.